and welcome to our very first online curator talk. I'm here at ACTS, uh, the Arts and Culture Center of Sussex, in the, uh, in the ACTS Gallery with Dr. Wendy Stewart. And because it's the summer of 2020 and the summer of COVID-19, um, we're trying to do things a little differently. Um, and we're going to attempt to do a, a virtual curator talk and we're going to have a little chat about this exhibition that's currently in the gallery entitled Seeing the Patient by the artist Dr. Mark Gilbert. So welcome Wendy and perhaps we can start with uh, you just uh, talking a little bit about yourself and what you do and your connection with Dr. Gilbert. Thank you. So I'm a pediatric neurologist, so as, as the name suggests, I take care of children that have issues with their brain, but also it can be issues with the spine, the muscles, and the nerves. So it can be any type of disorder that affects the whole nervous system. And all along throughout my training, I've had an interest in the arts and humanities, and I was fortunate enough to get the job of Director of Humanities at Dalhousie University and also to start the program here at Dalhousie Medicine New Brunswick when it opened 10 years ago. So we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the satellite campus for Dalhousie. And I'm also interested in research on how you can combine the arts and humanities in medicine. And it's really quite a lovely story because Mark contacted me almost five years ago out of the blue when I'd just been in the job of Director of Humanities for less than a year. And he said he was looking for a postdoc. So he's an artist who grew up in Glasgow, so he was another Scot, and he went to the Glasgow College of Art, and he was working as an artist, and then he was given the opportunity to work in London with a surgeon who does head and neck cancer surgeries. And from that, he ended up in Nebraska, and that kind of grew into some other projects, and he ended up doing his PhD there, so he was interested in pursuing further research using visual art in the context of medicine. And so when I heard all the things he'd been involved in, I was quite intrigued and I managed to find money to be able to bring him to Halifax initially. And then I was really keen to do some projects with him and I'd always wanted to do something with my patients with epilepsy. I've always been moved throughout my career in terms of what families live with. And I particularly wanted to honor the families who deal with children who have challenging epilepsy and also the stresses of even being given a diagnosis of epilepsy. And so that's how this project was born. I, I saw what Mark could do, and I saw the gift he had to deal with people and to actually draw them into the projects he was involved in. And so I asked him if he would like to do a visual arts project with my families, and, and he jumped at it, and so here we are. It's been quite phenomenal. It was a really exciting project, and. He found it very meaningful as well, and it certainly gave me insight into the families, even though I knew them well. So we have one of Michaela with her mum, and it's lovely to see not only the liveliness of Michaela's face, but also the more pensive look of her mum. And, and people may say, well, she looks sad, but Mark captured a moment, and it's always important to remember that. But I'm sure there are moments where she feels pensive and sad and it's important for us to think about that and think about what could impact their life and make a person feel like that. So when I think of caring for the kids, it's not just about treating their epilepsy, it's thinking about them in their entirety as a whole person. And the other piece of that is siblings are often impacted by chronic illness because a child who has high needs often takes a lot of the family uh, time and, and so it's hard for siblings and often they take on a much more mature role than they typically would and they grow up very quickly and feel like they have to be responsible for the, the other kids. And so we have the picture of Michaela with her brother as well and I feel like that captures that sense of that, that even siblings that are younger will often appear much more mature because they feel that sense of responsibility. The other thing that I think the paintings do, and there's a lovely one of a series of Sebastian, and you see him in different poses, he loves to dance, he loves music, and you see him moving in the wheelchair and smiling, and then he loves to rub his head, and people might uh, notice that as something negative, or perhaps he's upset, but it's something he just enjoys doing. And so it's lovely to see him in all these different poses, because it captures a sense of who he is, and it's not just a static image. But then the other side of that too is there's a series of dancing. 
and then also a series of them having his drop seizures and, and so that it gives that sense of that sudden change. It can go from a child being happy and dancing to music to suddenly being in a seizure and no longer responsive to that music. And that sudden change is what is so hard for families because seizures are incredibly stressful. You never know when they're going to happen, what time of day, um, people worry about the children's safety. And so it's very difficult sometimes to come to terms with that, especially when the diagnosis is first made. Many of the families I meet, I know them for many years, and one of the other challenges for them is transitioning from pediatric age group into young adulthood. And I've got a couple of paintings that Mark did, and I chose the, the two patients. I asked them if they'd like to be involved deliberately because they were older, and so the families have lived with their children having epilepsy for a long time. And I think it's hard to go from the pediatric piece into adulthood. Families worry about their future, what's going to happen to them, who will take care of them. And so I, I just love to see how they're depicted. Um, so we have, we've got uh, the two boys that are shown here. So Brad is behind me there. And then Zach will be shown as well in, in the image that you'll see. And so it's lovely to, to see them and, and also see the relationship they have with their family because they've been living with the epilepsy for a long, long time. And so I wanted to capture that and some of the challenges that they face. And so I feel the breadth of the, the show really covers all these things that families experience. And so I, I, was, I was very moved myself by how the show turned out because I, I felt like it more than honoured the, the people involved and that's exactly what I hoped for. So yes, um, what I find really interesting is that, um, and what I really like about how, well there are a couple of things about how Mark has been able to represent these children. Um, one thing is that uh, I've noticed that um, the tendency, I guess, in, well, in our history, um, I just want to talk a little bit about representation and inclusion. Um, there's been a tendency for um, artists and the subjects in art to be very, um, a very exclusive kind of privileged group. Usually, if you look through the art history books, well, first of all, I went to, I studied art history in the early 1980s, and at that time, there were really very, very few women represented in the history of art. That's changed a little bit now. Um, and uh, in terms of artists that are included, but in terms of, um, of this being a subject of a, of a painting or a sculpture, women were, are certainly there, but they're um, usually, you know, privileged European descent, women of wealth and privilege. And it's very rarely seen, you very rarely see um, racialized populations, indigenous people, people of different abilities, people with um, visual medical issues. And when you do see that, um, very often they are kind of shown to be exotic or a curiosity, perhaps. And that's really changed in the last, um, I've noticed it in the last decade for sure, with a lot of um, postmodern art, a lot of contemporary art, is very, it's trying very hard to be more inclusive. So you do see um, visual minorities much, much more. And what I like about what Mark has done here is he often will represent these children in a very honest, genuine way so that um, it's not sort of glossed over that, you know, he doesn't try to capture that moment when the head is most direct and the, the smile is the widest. He's, he's shown these children in a very uh, honest and genuine way, which I think really honors those children. So that was very deliberate on our part. For me, this project was about not only honoring the families and what they live with, um, but also to really depict who the children are and also the relationships that they have with their families. So this was a very condensed project. We actually did this over the span of about three and a half months, which was quite remarkable. And Mark and I talked a lot about this. We had a lot of interactions during the time he was doing the drawings and paintings. And 
he really found that a very powerful experience because he was so immersed in it and he knew that we had to get it done. And it was lovely because he did have to get it done in one sense, but it also meant we didn't get to capture as many of the family members as we might have liked to. But what we wanted to do in, in the show is to actually have examples of the fact that a child with a neurologic disorder, particularly epilepsy, is not there in isolation. They're really part of a family group, whoever that might be. And to actually show what they experience and how epilepsy can impact their lives and also the lives of their family members. So I feel like we managed to capture those things and I love with some of the drawings that Mark did, he captured the movement, he captured the seizures with the family's permission and just to actually understand that in that moment a child's life can change. So you can be in the middle of a lovely dinner and then the child might have a seizure or maybe they've planned an outing and the child has a seizure and they can no longer go. And just the impact those unexpected seizures have on people's lives. And so I, I love it for that. And the fact that you mentioned depicting people with different abilities, I, I felt really strongly that that was important. And I've even had colleagues have some discomfort with some of the depictions that we have in the show because it, it doesn't feel as pretty or as acceptable. But at the same time, for me, it captures part of that child's story and also part of the family's story. So we have one little boy who has a feeding tube and that was hard because he loved to eat and he enjoyed that and the family enjoyed sharing that with him so that changed things for them and to just be able to recognize that that was a huge shift for the family to come to terms with that and to talk about that and what I believe the paintings and drawings do is they provide an opportunity for learners to think about their own biases and their own reactions to people and I actually use some of the, the paintings as part of um, critical thinking workshops with medical students and my hope is to broaden that and use it in the context of other health professionals as well. Um, it's something that I've always found really interesting is that I've noticed a lot of people who choose a profession in healthcare a lot of people who, who go into medicine um, are really interested in the arts and a lot of people I know who, are, um, who have studied medicine are artists themselves. They, you know, they're musicians, they're writers, they're photographers, they're artists and I've always wondered, and those who aren't artists certainly appreciate and support the arts and I know doctors especially are so, so busy it's amazing to me that doctors find time to, you know, go to concerts and go to exhibitions, but they definitely do. Do you have any idea, you know, why that is? Absolutely. And for me, I'm, I'm a musician, so I, I've been playing the piano accordion since I was a child. And for me, that almost felt like a, a parallel life for me until I got in, involved in the arts and humanities and medicine. And this is a growing field. It's quite phenomenal. I was taken off and most medical schools are now integrating the humanities in some way into their curriculum and sometimes through extracurricular activities as well. For me personally, the, my music has always been my way of coping and dealing with the challenges and stresses of being in the medical field. I, when I play my accordion, I am in it and there is nothing else and to have those opportunities is very powerful. I also believe the arts and humanities generally, and there's a lot of discussion around this, can allow people to work through difficult situations, be it through reflective writing or through music or through visual art. Um, each year at the Canadian Conference on Medical Education there's actually an art show and it's quite phenomenal what people come up with to depict their experiences that they've had in medicine and it's usually learners and sometimes uh, residents as well, so they can be the undergraduate and postgraduate level. But some of them are incredible. Um, I've been fortunate to buy one actually, the story behind it is mind-blowing actually. So I love it. I, I really see it as a role to maintain wellness, but also to explore the importance of um, understanding our own biases, because we all have them. And it allows us to work through things together, also to understand the other. I feel there's all sorts of ways that the arts and humanities can contribute to medicine. And I think people who go into medicine are, are people who 
are creative overall because even to come to a diagnosis, you have to sometimes think outside the box and to think and also to be very intentional in your thinking. I'd really like to thank you, Dr. Wendy Stewart, um, for your work and for your time today. And I really would love to thank uh, Mark Gilbert, not in person, but virtually. Thank you so much, Mark Gilbert, for your work. Um, it's beautiful, it's moving. Um, I feel that the way that you've represented these young people is, is really honoring them and honoring their families in a very uh, honest, genuine, caring way. And uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful work. Um, so I hope that you have a chance to come in and see this exhibition. It's in the Axe Gallery on Maple Avenue in Sussex um, from now until August the 8th. So do try to come in and uh, check it out. And I just want to say thank you to Axe David for the, the chance to have it here because it's, it's such a gift to have it showcased again. And we're going to be looking for opportunities to um, actually be able to show this again elsewhere and I'm even trying to get it shown across Canada uh, as time goes by. I really hope that it can be used to educate and get people thinking about caring for children with epilepsy outside of the management of the epilepsy itself and just these other challenges that families face. We'd really love to hear from you in terms of what you think about the show. Uh, Mark and I have talked a lot about this and having that feedback from people who view it, who come at it perhaps with a different lens. We'd love to hear from you, so there'll be a link on the website and we'd love you to fill in the survey and give us your thoughts and feedback so that we can think about what else we might do with this. So thank you for listening in and I look forward to hearing from you.